Uh, thanks, Tina, and I'm very happy to, to be called a SIP expert. There's a lot of SIP expert, experts guru. here. At, guru. Yes, yes. There's a lot of gurus here at Cisco. <laughs> um, so what we've got here is a, a typical um, enterprise is going to have a few different locations. Right. Right. You've got your head, you've got your campus location, and you've got a few branch locations. Those would traditionally have had connections to the PSTN, regular PRI lines. So you're going to have these lines that you would have had years and years. You've got these PRI lines. Now these are each physical locations, yeah. physical connections. You you know you can't really move them around or do anything. They are there. Right. That's the problem with the PRI. It doesn't really have the flexibility that you have with an IP network to say. One day I want it to be um, in one location, and the next day I can have it in another location. So really what's happening with SIP trunking is we would decide that, okay, we're now going to, instead of having a PRI in each individual location, we're going to erase those ones, and instead of those connected to the PSTN, we're now going to have a connection that's going to go from the voice gate, from the individual branches, up to the central location where they actually have this Cisco Unified Border element, that cube, and then from there it's going to connect to the SIP trunk to the provider. So all of a sudden, I've now enabled the functionality of having SIP trunks in all of my branches and moved, removed those expensive connections from my individual branches. Now, we're assuming that there's a WAN here, right? These right. are traveling across a WAN that they've already got, so we're leveraging something that's already there for them. Right, that IP Hopefully. network between the branches and the headquarters, that's so important, and that's gotta be that quas enabled high-quality network in order to ensure really good voice quality.